Ukrainian troops have been learning how to disable landmines, munitions and other explosive devices during UK-based training this month, according to NATO officials. The UK government says over 50,000 Ukrainian recruits have now been trained on British soil. The Operation Interflex training has been delivered since the summer of 2022 and is now supported by 12 other countries, the government says. Working with all these other nations, it goes to show that this war is quite a big deal. And it does make it seem like a much more important job, since you've got Australians, you've got Swedes, you've got a bunch of other nations from NATO that are working with us," said one UK soldier taking part in the exercises. Ukraine on Tuesday was marking 1,000 days since Russia's full-scale invasion on February 24, 2022. The Halo Trust, a non-governmental organization that works to clear landmines left behind by conflicts, estimates that up to 2 million landmines may have been laid in Ukraine during this time. Okay, you're going to keep your legs comfortable, okay? As you may be, but however, I'm sure we're working in the safe lane. Working with all these other nations, it, is, it goes to show that this war is quite a big deal as to how it's going on. And it, it does make it seem like a much more important job since you've got Australians, you've got Swedes, you've got, you've got a bunch of other nations from NATO that are working with us. It, go, it just goes to show it's, it's a much bigger thing than a lot of people seem to realise now. It's bigger more than it was before. Okay, if you want to take a break, okay, you can stand up, you can shake off. Okay, and then from there, you can reassess the situation and go back down. Times you go to ensure, okay, but you're aware of what you're surrounding at all times. <laughs> kind of a walking stick. It looks like a walking stick. I do feel kind of proud as to the fact that we are teaching these Ukrainians what the, the essential skills that they need to win this war so they can go home and do just that. The Associated Press fanned out across Ukraine to chronicle a typical 24 hours of life just as the country was about to mark 1,000 days since Russia's full-scale invasion on February 24, 2022. November 11 was a typical day of violence and resilience in Ukraine. It opened as many days do, with pre-dawn Russian bombings on homes appending lives in various cities across the country. One hit Zaporizhia followed shortly later by another that killed six in Mykolaiv, including a woman and her three children. Before the day was even halfway done, a Russian ballistic missile shattered yet another apartment building, this time in the city of Krivi Rih. When Russian tanks rolled into Ukraine in February 2022, the conventional wisdom was that the capital, Kiev, would soon fall and the rest of the country wouldn't last long against a much larger enemy. The Ukrainian army proved it could slow the advance of Russia's forces and, if not drive them out completely, then with enough support from the West at least forestall defeat. But nearly three years later, the outlook is again grim. Russia is expending huge amounts of weaponry and human life to make small but steady territorial gains to the nearly one-fifth of Ukraine it already controls. Ukraine, meanwhile, is struggling to minimize losses, maintain morale and convince allies that, with more military aid, it can turn the tide. As this brutal war of attrition grinds toward its 1,000th day, neither side seems eager to negotiate. President-elect Donald Trump has said he could quickly end the war, though it is unclear how or in whose favor he might tip the scales. For now, the attacks continue and on Sunday Russia launches one of its fiercest missile and drone attacks at Ukraine's infrastructure. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says Russia launched 120 missiles and 90 drones in a large-scale attack across Ukraine targeting its energy infrastructure. The combined drone and missile attack was said to be the most powerful in three months.